Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306, back with another review. So, I got a message from a company called Vividbrite on uh, Amazon, and so they asked me if I wanted to review an upgraded projector, and I said, sure. I'm always interested in um, optical electronic stuff. So, they sent this guy over, and we are going to take a look at this. Okay, here it is. It's quite a large box. I can't quite fit it in frame. This is the Vividbrite F30, and as you can see here, hopefully, um, this promises to be full HD 1080p native. So the um, the panel itself is capable of producing the image. It's not downscaled or anything. Super excited about that. Um, yeah, you can see all the devices. It can pretty much hook up to anything with the video output, and we shall be testing that out. Let's see, there is a lot of uh, technical info here. Um, the brightness is rated at 4,200 lumens, so that would put this in the range of like a, an actual consumer grade, decently bright projector. So I'm super excited about that. Um, let's see what else. Interesting thing to note, it is it actually uses about a, just under a six inch LCD panel as the, um, the image device basically. So that's actually rather interesting. Um, it says it has an M star uh, V56 chip. I guess that's the, um, the main system on chip. Um, has all the normal information about contrast ratio and whatnot, but, uh, the real test is actually plugging in and seeing how it looks. Um, apparently it even has LAN. Uh, actually, no, it does not have LAN, not applicable. It does have a uh, SPDIF, um, for optical audio out. That's pretty neat. Um, has USB ports for media playback off thumb drives and whatnot, uh, IR receiver, audio out, just, um, regular analog, three and a half mil HDMI, and yeah, it can support a whole boatload of, uh, digital file formats. So, um, other than that, I guess there's nothing left other than to, to pop this guy open. A huge thanks, thanks to them for uh, sending this in. Um, retail price on this guy, as I get going, is I think it's about two hundred and thirty. I want to say two hundred and twenty, two hundred and thirty dollars. Um, which, if it can do what it claims to do, you know, um, at the full brightness and ten eighty p native, I think that's that's a reasonable price for a projector. Uh, seeing as most um, you know, name brand projectors in that spec range, probably going to cost you about four to six hundred, something like that minimum. Um, anyway, we got the remote here. It looks pretty standard, very much like uh, any other remote. How do you actually open this guy? Ah, okay, that's interesting. Um, just some AAA batteries. We're going to have to grab some. Uh, let's see. Very well packed. I like this. It even has a sort of raft, air-filled sort of bubble wrap thing going on there. So, the box is empty now. We'll just set that aside. Here's the projector itself. Now, one thing to note, this is quite a bit larger um, than the other projectors I've reviewed in the past. But, seeing how much brighter this is supposed to be, as well as how much higher of a resolution, I think this is an acceptable size for a projector. Um, this is something that, like, you know, you'd use for actual home entertainment. This is something like that. I'm going to see if um, this could live up to those kind of situations where you do have some ambient light. We got our IEC power connector. Comes with a nice beefy cable. I like that. And um, we have our power switch. Two USBs. HDMI. Here's our uh, SPDIF, the optical uh, toss link. Uh, input or output there rather. Here's our um, uh, three and a half millimeter audio out. You have our first IR sensor. We got a bunch of buttons on the back. I like seeing, um, I know <laughs> um, remotes are great and all, but if you lose this guy and you still want to be able to control it, you're going to need physical buttons. So I'm glad that they included quite a number of buttons. We have enter, um, Left, right, up, down, uh, 
some kind of menu, I guess. Uh, source, a quick source change. Power, and what appears to be back, I guess. Um, sorry about that, that was slightly out of frame. And we have some indicators here. So I'm guessing for power as well as um, temperature or something like that. Anyway, swing this around the side. And this has, let's see, has some weight to it. We have, uh, I, I guess, the front one, yes, yeah, definitely the Focus. Has quite a bit of weight around. It's actually moving the entire lens array. And this guy is uh, tilting, I'm guessing, some sort of um, mechanical linkage to the, the um, LCD or maybe a mirror lens, something like that, to control the keystone. And there is a little bit of a range on here. Uh, we'll see just how much you can actually adjust the keystone. We've got plenty of venting, so that's definitely good. Because if it if it does run at you know the full uh, what was it four thousand lumens or whatever it's going to get pretty warm. So anyway, here we can see the lens. I can adjust the uh, focus there. Actually, a little hard to do with one hand. Um, you have to definitely grab the projector. Um, uh, actually, it's not that bad. If it gets stuck at the ends, either all the way in or all the way out, it takes a little bit of force to do that. But uh, the wheels have this uh, grippy texture that makes it easier to grasp. You can see how big that lens is right there. That's going to help with uh, getting as much light out as possible. Um, it does come with a nice little lens cap too, so definitely appreciate that. We have our second IR sensor. Uh, we have the Vivid Bright uh, branding as well as Full HD. And we just got a bunch of vents on that side. On the bottom, you can see the model number is F30. It has a nice little kickstand, and this is this is a pretty beefy kickstand. I mean, the projector seems to weigh, I want to say, something like five or six pounds, maybe a little more than that. Um, so it's going to need a pretty strong kickstand. This guy isn't going to break off anytime soon. And I like how it, it kind of sticks at the, the height that you leave it at. There's enough friction in there. That'll be good. Um, there are no adjustable, the feet, like the rubber little feeties aren't adjustable, so you can't adjust the height other than this uh, front little kickstand. Then again, you can always just grab like a thin book or something to prop it up if you need to give it more anglage. Anglage? Is anglage a word? Anyway, uh, yeah, other than that, just got some more vents on the bottom, and that's it. And we are going to actually have to test this out. So I'm going to do exactly what I did with the other projectors that I've uh, shown on this channel. I'm going to use it for about a week um, under different situations and scenarios and then uh, show you guys some um, example footage and um, I'll give you guys my impressions on this. So for you guys, it'll be a second or two. For me, it'll be a week. So I'll see you then. Okay, pardon the uh, handheld nature of this. I have the uh, projector all set up. I have a USB thumb drive plugged in as well as one of those uh, Miracast Wi-Fi dongles. And you can see the antenna right down here, just leaving that dangling. And I'm actually pulling power from that from the second USB port. So I'm really glad that they included multiple USB ports. Uh, it's plugged in, power switched on. I just have it sitting on a stool set up. And so we can just uh, turn this on. There we go, blue light goes on. And it'll take a second or so. I have a 84-inch um, uh, diagonal projector screen set up currently. And it's roughly uh, focused in on that. And there you go. You can see it fills the entire screen. The distance from here to the screen is about, I want to say, seven, seven and a half feet, something like that. Maybe about eight feet. Anyway, you can see it's quite a large in image, and uh, you can see the blinds are open uh, right behind the screen, so this is nowhere near a dark room, and the image actually looks really good. So I'm really happy that um, they didn't fudge the brightness numbers. But um, in terms of the remote, um, I'm actually pointing it at the screen. I'm guessing it's bouncing off, and um, it's able to detect it, so that's actually really nice. I don't have to point it like directly at the unit, though I can if I want to. Anyway, uh, here we have the, uh, the main menu. We can always switch um, sources by going to the third option or uh, the button right underneath the power button. And here you can see the um, USB 1, 2, and then HDMI. 
If I just switch to HDMI, it takes a second or so, and then the uh, mirror cast dongle will pop up. And this will allow me to attach any kind of, um, here you can see it right now, attach any kind of um, Android or even iOS phone or tablet. Anyway, we're just gonna switch back. There we go, to USB. And uh, this menu will allow you to um, search the thumb drive or attached hard drive for uh, movies, music, pictures, and you can go into settings even, and you can change language, um, different picture modes for like color and uh, sharpness and contrast and all that. You can change the aspect ratio. I can even uh, adjust the size. Um, beyond that, we have uh, sound mode. We can change um, audio profiles of the audio, obviously the onboard audio. And it does, that is slightly annoying. It times out a little bit too quick. Um, if you're not moving the settings around in the menu, so that is a bit annoying. You can turn on and off uh, SPDIF, which is the optical audio out, surround sound. For all this stuff, for the internal audio, it might make a difference if you hook up to a three and a half millimeter audio jack, but the internal audio, I don't really notice any difference really. Um, so I just leave all this on standard and just turn these off. Uh, flip, you can actually uh, rotate so you can have this as a rear projector or a ceiling mounted projector and there's a quick button on the remote itself it's uh, right above the volume up and this will do the same thing so that's really cool uh, you can restore factory default settings and you can do a software update which I do not have this is already up to date so uh, we can just exit back out um, here we can go into movies and really odd um, the file, the folders look like folders, obviously. I wish they would change. These are actually video files. They're not folders, but they look like folders, so it's really confusing. But anyway, I can just start up my, um, let's see. I can just start up my channel trailer. It takes a couple seconds to load, depending on what the, um, the video file bit rate is and whatnot. Here you can see it gets very loud. So yeah, um, good thing it gets loud because actually the um, the onboard fan is pretty noisy. Um, I will say just having it like right next to my seats, it is <laughs> a bit irritating. If you are going to have this set up, I would have this set up kind of behind you or up on the ceiling where it'd be um, less likely to irritate you. Um, it is really nice they include um, a pause button like a hard part pause button so you don't have to go into the menu just to pause it. I really wish they had a um, a hard fast forward and rewind. If you want to fast forward and rewind you have to click the um, the enter button to bring up the menu and then you have to go left or right and then select the um, the feature which is a bit annoying and then you press down uh, to make the menu disappear again. So I wish they had hard buttons for that but it's that's sort of a small detail. I know you can see the image quality is uh, really rather good. This is a 1080p native. I'm right next to the screen. You can just about see the aliasing on uh, some of the text. Um, but I rendered this video at uh, 1080p and you can see, sit down here. And yeah, that looks really nice. The detail is really crisp. It's pretty bright. This is gonna look amazing at night. Unfortunately, um, just with my blinds closed, it's not really very dark in here, but it does look pretty good even as is. Uh, so we can just go into here, just skip through this. So you can actually skip through um, up to, I think, 30 second, uh, 32 times speed. And um, yeah, you can just see here, just mute this. Uh, video going right there, go right up to the screen. There's some aliasing, um, I think it's because of how I encoded the video. This is an MPEG-4 file that I, I uploaded to YouTube and then I re-downloaded it. So that means that the quality is gonna be 
not as good as if I have like a native ripped, um, like straight from a Blu-ray or something. But yeah, it does not look bad at all. That looks really crisp, really clear. Um, from the looks of it, it's running 30 frames per second, which is kind of to be expected. Uh, but yeah, for such a large image, this definitely watchable. This would be amazing if the um, if it were pitch black. Um, the image would definitely pop a lot more. The um, colors are actually pretty good too. Um, I'll show you guys in a sec. I just speed through this video a bit. So yeah, um, that's it for uh, video clips. If I want to go back, just um, view some test images. I'm going to test image. And we can just close this. And you can see this is a 1080p uh, test image I downloaded online. And those colors are really vibrant. I really like that. They look really nice. Um, you can just about see like the individual uh, pixels um, when you get right in there. But um, when you go back, it's just pretty much impossible to tell. If we skip to the uh, next image, pause, put that down. Um, I try to get the focus as, as good as possible from about, what I said, seven or eight feet. And you can see um, some of the lines, you can see a little bit of um, kind of aliasing. And over towards here, you can see you can barely tell, um, you know, the individual pixels apart. But that's really getting in close to the image. It looks really nice and sharp from back here. And uh, just another color bar test. So you can just see a um, just a color bar test here, and wow, those colors are really vibrant, really pop. So I'm definitely super happy with this. Uh, the keystone adjustment, I can just show you. Uh, let's just go to an image. Yeah, it's good enough so that you can see the border. Um, it does allow um, a decent amount of adjustment. Um, so. You want to get the projector as straight as possible, though, because right now, um, with my adjustment, I actually had to put a uh, candy tin, <laughs> like a mint tin underneath to prop it up. Um, with my current, the height of both the projector stand um, as well as the, the screen stand, uh, it just so happened that I'm kind of right at the bottom of the range, so I can't go any any uh, more upwards than this, but I can... I can you know, tilt it down anyway. But yeah, you can see the keystoning works just fine. The adjustment, um, I was able to project this a little bit larger than this. Um, I'm kind of limited by, you know, any blank walls that I have in my house right now, so I'm not able to really go too much larger than about 100 inches. Uh, it does fine up to 100 inches. I'm pretty sure it would be able to push a little bit past that as well. Um, but in terms of how the smallest image, I've noticed you can't really get the image any smaller than about 40 inches, um, before the, the actual wheel, uh, can no longer go inwards. Uh, so I would say anywhere from like 40 to 120 inches, this, this projector should do just fine. Uh, uniformity of the focus, it is a little hard. I think it's, um, my projector screen is skewed slightly over. You can see this corner is a little bit, um, a little bit blurry compared to the other three corners. But I think if I got this lined up and I and I uh, set everything up using like a uh, a level, I would be able to get this perfectly in focus. Yeah, you can see that's a little bit better right now. But yeah, um, looking really good. I would say uh, after running this, I ran this for about an hour or two watching uh, YouTube videos uh, over Wi-Fi using the dongle that I attached and um, it, it just gets warm. Uh, you can hear on um, this left side here, all the hot air is being um, pushed out. Uh, but in terms of the actual case temperature, it's uh, barely warm to the touch. So they did a really good job. Yes, I know the fans are very loud, but um, I think that's a, a reasonable compromise to keep the unit cool. Uh, I'd r much rather have a slightly louder projector than one that runs hot, especially LCD. 
uh, projectors, um, the biggest um, downside it, for running an LCD projector hot would be um, limited lifetime of the panel itself because it uses an organic uh, polarizing filter uh, before and after the LCD glass. Uh, if you run it hot, you will actually damage the, uh, the filters. They'll actually brown and you'll see like a brown spot forming kind of in the middle and it, um, it's permanent damage to the LCD. So I'm glad to hear that they took cooling seriously and they added, you know, louder fans, but ones that'll actually keep it cooler longer. So in terms of uh, the USB functionality, um, it's pretty much played most of what I've thrown at it. Um, certain files I think it has more trouble with. Um, I noticed particularly, um, I think it was an MKV file. I started playing it and about five minutes in, the, um, the audio was desynchronized from the video. And I paused it and I think I fast forward or I rewinded it a little bit and then I played it and then it worked again. So there's something funny going on um, with dec uh, decoding the video codecs, at least certain ones. Uh, but in terms of if I were just to plug this into um, HDMI directly, uh, from what I've noticed, there's no latency or at least not no noticeable latency. I actually hooked this up to a, v a PST a TV, a Vita TV, and I played some video games for a little while, and it ran perfectly. There was really no noticeable lag on the um, the video there. And yeah, we can just get up really close in there. You can see uh, this set of lines is about as small of a feature detail as this projector can possibly display. Uh, you can see their individual pixels there and that looks really crisp. So I'm super excited. Um, hopefully I'm going to be able to you know, drill into my ceiling and set this up um, kind of out of the way. I'm going to have to figure out a dedicated room for that right now. This, But anyway, yeah. Um, huge thanks to uh, Vivabrite for sending this in for review, and I'm super psyched by how uh, how good this looks. I have a couple other projectors that are kind of uh, XGA resolution um, for like business type use, and I have some Pico projectors that are uh, WVGA, so 854 by 480. So um, they look okay, but just seeing my content in 1080p is really nice. I got to say, so definitely huge kudos to them. And for about, I use this for about a week. Um, I've ran it probably about maybe three hours a day, something like that, two or three hours a day, about a, a movie's worth every day for a week. And I haven't noticed any problems so far. So um, that would be about maybe 15 to 20 hours I ran it, if that. Um, but so far it's been chugging along and I'm really happy. I expected it to get really hot, but it really hasn't. Um, the only thing is it does blow out warm out air out the side there. But other than that, um, I can feel it actually pulling cool air in through this side. So the, uh, the venting works really well. So yeah, anyway, uh, if you guys are interested in uh, taking a look at their projectors, they have a couple different models. Um, in varying ranges uh, depending on what you're looking for um, all of them I believe are LED projectors so this is rated to last something ridiculous like 20 or 30 thousand hours so you should never really have to ever change um, the LED bulb itself um, on this projector the only thing you might have to do is after a couple months you probably will have to clean the um, the dust inside it, I believe it has a um, air intake uh, filter, like an air filter. So that would be something that you'd have to do regular maintenance if you're in a dusty environment. Uh, but other than that, this guy will just keep on chugging. It's a LCD projector and um, well-designed LCD projectors will actually outlive, you know, uh, halogen-based projectors. And even DLPs have, uh, have a lot of problems specifically with getting uh, stuck or dead pixels, but an LC projector, the failure modes are completely different. They're usually related to heat. Um, and luckily this, this design seems to, to take care of heat pretty well, even after running a few hours continuously. So yeah, anyway, if you guys are interested in uh, picking one of these up, I'll have links down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.